I can, I can hear you just fine. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us today. Well, I was wondering if you could start off by telling us a little bit about how this Australian tour has come about and how excited you are about being able to head back to our shores again. Yeah, I mean, I think from uh, based on the successes of the last one and the, the people, the kind of camaraderie and uh, bond we forged with these fellows over at the Carbon Sunset, at the last tour, we kind of already had determined midway that, you know, this was something that was working out and was a relationship we wanted to continue to foster. So we, you know, the, the, I think the, the wheels are already in motion to bring us back um, last time last year when we were there um but yeah looking looking super forward to it um just uh just hoping like the emotional shock of these fires isn't hasn't totally kind of ravaged the hearts and souls of the of the people so much as that there's some kind of somber vibe over like a dour kind of cloud cast over the continent which i would, wouldn't no blame if it, if, if it was, but uh, I guess uh, I guess it's kind of touchy how people are taking these fires. You know, seems, music seems so trivial at this point when you know five hundred thousand koalas perished. You know, it's just so surreal. Yeah. Digging, but. Yeah, yeah, it's been a really weird time, especially um, for people in the cities, because normally when bushfires happen in Australia, it happens in the country or it happens in the bush, and people in the cities aren't largely affected. But at the moment, we've been getting choking smoke in the cities and this red sun that looks like something post-apocalyptic. So it it has... Um, it has affected the cities as well. So does that make it harder for you, like coming to Australia, knowing that people have just been through an event like this that's been life-changing for an entire nation? Yeah, it absolutely does. I mean, in so many ways, it kind of, it kind of trivializes what we're doing, but then there's the other side. It's like, well, people enjoy this, so it's also a gift some way that we bring their child to come to realize it is it is a gift um, and it's you know it's, it's, a, it's a way for people to escape so I guess in some ways it's, it's essential for the for the arts to, to carry on and you know create these events for people to come and enjoy themselves and um, have that experience so I I'm, I'm honored to be able to come at, at a time like this but it's also I feel you know yeah. Very yeah. minimal kind of contribution, but anyway, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask about the last tour that you did to Australia. It was so successful. Did it come to a surprise to you just how successful that tour was, or did you already know that there was a connection between Drab Majesty and Australia? No, we had no idea. It was. It was a surprise, and um, it was it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I had no idea. It was really. I don't really follow the the, uh, the, the what they call the metrics or the statistics of the band's growth really that kind of stringently. I'm not really. I just kind of rather just keep my head down and make songs. Yeah. Um, so yeah, to, to find out that that's where there was the listenership and a. a fandom in Australia. It was pretty surreal, so yeah, I'm very grateful for it, though, of course. Yeah. What do you like to do when you're on tour in a country? Do you like to get out and have a bit of a look around and, and kind of explore the cities that you're in, or do you prefer to to kind of stay indoors and recover from the night before and get ready for the next show? Oh, I just stay in my hotel and do drugs the entire time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I love I love to do as much as possible. I mean, it, 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 at the at the rate of a show a night, it can get kind of taxing, and there's definitely like a cap off where the energy caps off if, if there's not a, a day a break. But um, yeah, I mean, we're both like avid avid uh, 
like Sky Sears and um, very important to get the kind of local experience for us also. Um, the show is honestly sometimes secondary because it's just, there's new places we haven't been. We're, we're way more interested in kind of having someone show us around and see, and see the sites and just, yeah. Yeah. Learn about the learn about the space. I mean, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's that's definitely that's definitely an important thing. And of course, we like to hang late and party and do all that stuff. And that's also absolutely part of it. But that's all. That's, that's kind of the same wherever you go. Um, so I, I'm more interested in like kind of just seeing some of the sort of sites and just cool things in the city. That yep. You wouldn't get to do here in Los Angeles. Yeah. A lot of people say that, that Melbourne, the city that I'm from, is a lot like Los Angeles. Is that something that you found when you were here, that um, some of our cities did kind of mirror Los Angeles in a way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Melbourne, for sure, was, uh, was, was felt really at home. Uh, I, loved, I loved the architecture, though, there. It was so, so cool, the houses with the wrought iron kind of, um, kind of, little attributes on the, you know what I'm talking about, those, those yeah. iron kind of spiky, like spiky eye, like I love that so much, I thought that was so unique, I'd never seen any houses like that before. Yeah. Um, just the residential communities were really beautiful. Uh, also, like LA, there's beautiful residential communities, but found that architecture to be quite interesting. Yeah, the, 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 the nightlife was quite nice, and food was great. Yeah, was a lot of amenities, kind of just definitely a comfortable city for sure yeah yeah now talking about modern mirror it was an absolutely fantastic album but it really explored uh ancient greece mythology and and there was a lot in that is that something that's going to influence this tour as well and where did that passion come from about greek mythology i spent a lot of time in athens writing this record so i was, it, I was kind of inundated with it, going to various museums and working in a flat that was pointed directly at the Parthenon, yeah. uh, or the Acropolis for that matter, and I could just kind of look outside every day and just see this, this kind of glistening marble structure up on the hilltop and kind of really put into perspective um, how old you know, and the, the ground that I was working on was, and that there's a lot of folks to do that. Um, and then also seeing this kind of sprawling metropolis of Athens being a, a more recent thing, really, and kind of just really kind of feeling humbled by the overlapping histories. You know, the whole place is steeped in antiquity, kind of just put into perspective, like, my mortality in a lot of ways. And it, was, uh, it was kind of an interesting thing to pull, to pull from and the analog of uh, narcissists uh, and some the things like the technology I, I found to be kind of a sound uh, analogy that I kind of wanted to explore in the, uh, in the, in the album title and, and various lyrics and whatnot. So yeah, it was very inspiring being in Athens. Yeah, and that'll probably be something else that'll come across in Melbourne as well, because Melbourne and Athens are sister cities, because we've got the largest Greek population in the world outside of Greece, so that might be something that comes across oh, wow. with the Melbourne show as well, yeah. I didn't even know that. <laughs> so, That's cool. it, it is such a, a fascinating mythology, and uh, like growing up in Melbourne and having a lot of Greek friends, it's something that I've studied a lot of as well. You, you mentioned that you question like your own mortality by being there what was it actually like sitting down and trying to put that into words for the lyrics of the album um you know for me usually the the, the music is kind of the first part and then as there was kind of a ritual i would just like kind of churn out maybe one or two songs a day and then by night i would walk around the city kind of just listening to these demos that I was producing and then little bits of, of, of lyrics would come in or just little phrases or maybe themes and stuff but I didn't really synthesize the lyrics till I got home uh, kind of sat down kind of just reflecting on the trip and kind of 
kind of going over my notes and then kind of put them together back in Los Angeles. Um, so that's kind of how that worked. But it was it was more about getting the, 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 the musical, the harmonic content sorted while I was there. And uh, that, that just flowed very easily. Um, just, just being based on just kind of the detachment that Athens was at the time. Now I have a lot of friends there, so it's, it's a even more distracting place. But at the fir- first when I went there for the three months that I spent there, I had like one friend there, and it was just I didn't know anyone, and I, you know, I don't speak the language, so it was just I kind of felt like I was in my own kind of surreal bubble of creativity, and could just kind of work off that, and and that was uh, yeah, it was really liberating. Yeah, what drew you to Athens in the first place? Like, did you go there um, wanting to to write music, or was it something else that drew you to go to Athens? We had been on tour, and it was uh, we had been doing a uh, run in Scandinavia, uh, and then we were in very much in Ukraine, and it was still it was very cold still, uh, and then the next day. We flew to Athens, and when we got off the plane, or whatever reason, when I got out of the cab in the city, like the, the climate was just so similar to Los Angeles, and it just felt like my my body kind of just went, oh, whoa, there's something really familiar about this weather, and the way things smell, and like even the foliage and, and whatnot, and uh, and I and I know that Athens and Los Angeles are on a very similar I guess latitudinal degrees uh, from one another. They're you can almost draw a straight line across from LA to Athens. Um, so there was just some kind of familiarity there, and I was just so blown away by our 24 hours there. We had a show, just a quick fly in and fly out. I was just so, yeah, I was just so kind of captivated by the city, and it was so dense and so mysterious. I just wanted to know more. I'd never been kind of. Uh, you know, surprised by a place as much as I was there, and I decided to just go back and kind of learn more about it. Yeah. I had some friends there who were scared to have me come back and they were going to show me the city, so yeah, it was awesome. Awesome. Well, Deb, I know we are running out of time, so I'd like to quickly ask before I go, what is the plans for Drab Majesty in 2020, and is there anything you'd like to say to your Australian fans before you hit our shores again? Okay, well, plans, um, as you know, there's, there's pretty much touring lined up through the middle of the summer, maybe till July, and then uh, it's, I'm really looking forward to taking the rest of the year off and kind of getting back to a, a incubating kind of creative space, much like Athens, maybe go take a trip and try to write somewhere else, but really kind of figure out what the next aesthetic turn for the band is and um, whether that be visually, sonically, or both, um, and trying to write some new material, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe there'll be a release in 2021, but nothing, nothing's decided yet, potentially make a single this year, that might be nice to do at some point, but um, yeah, I haven't written much in a long time, so it's definitely uh, overdue for, for something like that, and then as far as the Australian fans, just, uh, that works incredibly grateful for the second chance to come so far from home and you know it's uh there would be no gig if it wasn't for them i know that's kind of cliche to say there would be this if it wasn't for you but it's true you know we will we will go where we're told and where we're wanted and um we'll never take that for granted awesome well deb it's been amazing talking to you today and we cannot wait to see you in australia so i'll see you when you get to melbourne Wonderful. Thanks, thanks for talking. Cheers, man. Awesome. Not a problem. You have a great night. We'll see you soon. All right. All right. Bye. 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 Thanks, Dave.